Well, that was always the idea that Amy and I first talked about, was casting a, a younger Peter Parker than had ever been in the movies before. Yeah. And if we were lucky and if the audience responded, we could chart his growth and the maturity through high school, through the experience of interacting with the other, the other Marvel characters. And starting with a mentor in Iron Man, uh, in, uh, in Civil War and Homecoming, and then see him uh, grow beyond that and deal with the loss of that mentor. And as we saw in Far From Home and in No Way Home, uh, Peter growing into the hero that, uh, that uh, we all know and love. Uh, so that is, it is quite surreal to be here on the, you know, in the, in the final weeks before audiences will get to see, um, uh, in a lot of ways, the culmination of that, of that journey that started with a conversation between Amy and I a yeah. number of years ago. It's kind of the culmination of his origin story. Yep. One of the reasons we wanted him to be as young as possible is so that we could explore the high school years. And uh, very much like the Harry Potter franchise did, each book is a year in school. So initial ideas were, yes, we have sophomore year and junior year and senior year. And we've stuck to that, of sort of. He's had amazing adventures in between those years. Far From Home ended up being sort of over summer of that. And, and, and No Way Home very much is his senior year. And just as his senior year is starting, when he's figuring out what he wants to do with his life and where he and MJ and Ned want to go off to college together, of course, coincides exactly when Mysterio outs his identity. And the worst possible thing uh, happens to Peter Parker, that his identity is revealed, he's being framed for all the terrible things that happen in Far From Home, and all he really wants to do is start his senior year and have a normal kid experience. And that push and pull between being a hero and being a regular, a regular kid. That's not quite how the spell works, and it's very difficult and dangerous to try and change it mid-casting. All right, Spider-Man. Fun thing about having Peter Parker in the MCU is interacting with the other Marvel characters, and obviously Iron Man was uh, was the primary point of interaction in uh, Homecoming. Nick Fury played that part very, very well in Far From Home, and it made sense that that we were gonna leave Peter in Far From Home with a big problem, as big a problem as he'd ever faced, which is his identity is revealed. And that was very fun on that movie because it forced us into a really big problem to solve yes. in, the next, uh, in, in this next movie. The difference between a Spider-Man not living in the MCU and a Spider-Man living in the MCU is that there are people you can go see when you have these, these life-changing, world-altering problems. And, uh, uh, people remember from Infinity War that he did get to meet Doctor Strange. He took a quick jaunt to space with Doctor Strange. So it did make sense that when faced with this problem, and more for his friends than for him, when people see the movie, he would go to someone he thinks could help him. And, uh, and that's really where the story begins. And it's a beautiful relationship between him and Doctor Strange in the movie, because although they went through that traumatic experience together, they get to know each other in this movie and Peter goes from, you know, Stephen thinking of him as a kid with some extraordinary abilities to being a full-fledged hero in and of himself. What's such a, an honor uh, working in Marvel Studios is getting to watch storytellers, whether they're actors, whether they're directors, whether they're writers, whether they're the other creative producers, grow and change and evolve over the years. Um, and John Watts is an amazing example of that. He did a great film called Cop Car, very small, but very character oriented, which is really what got him on our radar for Homecoming. And now seeing him grow through Homecoming and then Far From Home, and now with No Way Home, which is by far the most ambitious Spider-Man film ever made, um, seeing how he's grown into that role. And really now has, be, has gone from, a, uh, from an excited newcomer to an excited uh, expert. Uh, which is uh, which is fun to watch, and he's now handling these tremendous action scenes um, with a skill that now other filmmakers are looking up to and wanting to learn from. Which is just fun now. As a, as a am I becoming an elder statesman? Uh, maybe I am. Uh, to now sit back and watch that uh, is is really amazing. In light of the recent controversy, we are unable to accept your application. It's just so unfair. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. You guys definitely didn't. You know what? Just sort of sitting in a circle, talking through, talking through the story, and trying to sort of discover it together and find the nuance. It wasn't like 
you know, you sit down at your computer, print out the pages and say, this is what you're going to say, you know. It meant so much to everyone there uh, that I just wanted to really discover it with them. And it became this like really cool, so again, surreal is the word I keep coming back to, like collaborative process. Sitting in a room, uh, in this case, it was a conference room at Marvel Studios with the team is always my favorite part of the process where anything is possible. We knew coming out of Far From Home that we didn't want to shy away from the fact that his identity is now revealed. It's out there. And that was certainly always the starting point. And with Eric Summers and Chris McKenna and our director, John Watts, and, and uh, uh, Amy Pascal, we sat and just started brainstorming. What happens next? What happens to him as he starts to, as he swings away from Madison Square Garden with that big, uh, big TV screen out of his identity? And how does his life change and get turned upside down? And more importantly, how does it affect his friends? You know, Peter Parker can handle a lot, but when he starts to see his friends uh, being affected by his actions unfairly, that, that really um, uh, is emotionally draining for him. Uh, so, so that was always early on where it was. And, and, and we had a lot of fun dis discussions. It's always, you know, having a discussion of what, oh, you know what would be cool? It'd be cool if we did this, it'd be cool if we did that. As I said, I'd always been saying, yeah, if we ever brought Ock back, it would be, you'd have to bring Alfred Molina. Um, and how would you, how would you do that? And we thought it might be fun someday. But as we started working on really tracking the story of Tom Holland as Peter Parker and what would he do and what does he has access to? What does he have access to in the MCU to undo this? And we realized, well, he knows who Dr. Strange is. Dr. Strange is down there on Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village. He could just go ask him to fix it all. Just magically fix it all. Just turn back time or do a spell or do something so that my life can go back to normal. And as you might imagine, uh, it's not that easy and things start to go wrong. Because he starts to realize, okay, well, Doctor Strange has a spell of forgetting, but he doesn't want everybody to forget. He wants Aunt May to know, and Happy to know, and MJ to know, and Ned to know. He's not by himself in our universe. He's got confidants, and he doesn't want to lose that. So he starts screwing up the spell. And Doctor Strange finally has to shut it down and say, "Never mind, kids, sorry, I never should have even tried this. Um, uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. But unfortunately, even in those little moments where a spell was going awry, we slowly start to realize that instead of making people forget that he was, that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, the spell went awry so that everybody in any universe who knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man came into our world. Who are you? Where am I? All of them are such fantastic, actors in and of each of them are such great actors and we were so lucky that they loved playing those parts as much as the audience and we love seeing them so that they really did want to come back and reprise those roles it was just thinking about what would be fun to see um, visual combinations that you never thought you would see how to put things together and just at the heart of it you know who um who are these guys? Like, who are these actors? Um, how great would it be to see Alfred Molina again? And Willem Dafoe, and get to see Willem Dafoe without the mask, you know, really get to see him be who he is. And, you know, having Jamie get to come in. Where the hell are we? There's so many great actors that have been in these movies and to be able to bring them all together and to like, finish, find a way to finish their storylines, maybe in a different way. And uh, they're all sort of the victims of accidents. Like, they're all the victims of technological mis mistakes. You know, some hubristic, some purely accidental. Jamie Foxx just falls into a tank of electric eels. Like, um, it's just, a, just an accident. <laughs> but to use that as an entry point to telling a story about the idea of second chances. I love it. It's like the usual suspects or, you know, Reservoir Dogs, like, I love the idea of putting a bunch of rogue villains together and just watching them meet each other and hang out and talk. 
Like it doesn't necessarily have to be an action scene every time. Like I love the idea of Sandman and Electro talking about how they got the way they were. Like it's just, I've never really seen that. <laughs> People are speculating on what they can expect, and, and uh, I hope they, uh, I hope they're surprised uh, in many different ways when they see it. Uh, we've not put out a Spider-Man movie in, in the holidays before. I remember Amy going back to Spider-Man Two or Spider-Man Three, wanting snow yeah, and begging, the holidays. Begging yes. Sam to put snow in the yeah. movie. Uh, and uh, and uh, we we have that in this movie, and it just seems like an amazing uh, bit of timing when the world is ready. To, for there to be something to bring us together, even just for a couple of hours in a movie theater. Um, and I think this movie can do that. Yeah, me too. What an incredible behind the scenes that we have here for Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, it's awesome to see how the creators were able to sit down together and get a script together for the third and final trilogy. Um, it's phenomenal to see how they put the trilogy together um, and get the, the multiverse in there as well. As you can see, there's really some cool stuff here in this behind the scenes, but did you know that they filmed this whole movie and most Marvel films in Atlanta? Atlanta's like the third um, Hollywood, basically, but it's basically number one right now in tax incentives. So let me know down in the comments down below if you enjoyed this behind the scenes. Let me know one of your favorite um, um, uh, Spider-Man characters out of all of them if you've seen the film and or of the of the Spider-Man villains and I'll see you here next time later